Howdy y'all. Uh, good morning from Laughing Good Gardens. Well, first time you've been in the house, I guess. It's uh, the first actual cold day of the year. I think it got down to about 20, 25 degrees last night. Um, a lot of veggies. I didn't have time to cover them yesterday, so a lot of them were frozen. But the kale was really yummy when it was frozen this morning. Um, water was frozen, so it's waiting for some of that to thaw out a little bit and then work with that. Um, so you just have to figure out a way to work with winter most years. Sometimes it comes early, sometimes it comes, you know, slightly as the temperature, how do you say, decrease. This year, yesterday was 50 degrees, you know, that was the morning lows for the past couple of weeks and all of a sudden just out of nowhere you know a cold spell came in and dropped everything 25 to 30 degrees but you know always taking advantage of these uh cold days that are outside but it should be warmed up now it's, it's nice and sunny out there but just been working on a few things um mainly figuring out my rotation i had somewhat of a rotation going you know but those things are how do you say it, always changing as you do things differently or as you grow and familiarize yourself with what will work so i had one planned out to where i you know I do certain things in certain fields. You know, I have five plots. You know, two of them are about 20 feet by 50 feet. So those are my smaller gardens. Um, you know, I have everything set to kind of like, you know, JM48 style, uh, four foot, um, four foot rows with however long I want them to be. Uh, my standard is 100 feet. I have two fields that are, actually three fields that are 100 feet long. Um, the two 50 feet long, but my beds are four feet um, with the, uh, well, let me, uh, let me uh, explain that a little bit. It's 30 inch beds with uh, 18 inch walkways. So, you know, you have 30 inches for planting and you got 18 inches in between each row. So 18 inches plus 30, it's 48 inches. Um, so with a 20 foot, that's how it is. That equals, I think, five rows. But then on one end, I have the 18 inches I have to add for the additional walkway. But I have fences up since I have animals, you know keep the wildlife out as well. I got permanent fences, you know, encompassing it. So I usually leave about three feet on each side. And at the end, since I was using the tiller, I left about six feet on each end at the time. But now I'm starting to use the chickens for that a lot more. But, you know, since my soil isn't that great yet, uh, this past spring, I still used a little bit of the tillage, you know, the tiller to till uh, a few a few rows that I used. Um, my layout is just a square acre, but a lot of the northern side, I got some cotton with trees, and then the eastern side, I really don't have anything. We have a hogan here that we use for ceremonial purposes here. So that side of the lot is pretty just vacant, you know, just, I just let the wild vegetation grow, just the natural vegetation here. Um, that, um, so everything here is like on the southern side and the western side, so it kind of creates like a little hook around the house. Um, I just kind of worked with what I had. Um, that's just how it kind of worked out for me. 
So the rotation, you know, last year I figured something out. Um, I have written down somewhere. I probably should have found it so I can show you guys. But you know, it was going to be like a five-year rotation. But then there were some things that were not really working because at the time I wasn't really thinking about chickens. So now that I have egg-laying chickens, you know, I need to kind of think about that a little bit further than I did and just kind of laid out some things for this. Um, so I've just been working on there this morning and I had one, but then I totally forgot I had, you know, an additional spot here. So I'll show you that really quick. So here, you know, um, the house is pretty much sits here in this area. So you got the water sources and my cottonwood garden, as I call it, it's a small one, 20 feet by 50 feet. And that's five rows. And just kind of decided to keep things closer together since this one I call it double wide because it's got nine, nine beds, you know, going across. And it's a hundred foot long. So there's a huge ant heel here. So I kind of just leave this row alone. So I can use four beds and four beds. And then just use 50 feet. So that's going to be my new thing. Um, just use little sections at a time. You know, 20 feet by 50 feet or... 18, 16 feet, you know, four rows or five rows wide by 50 feet long. So that's kind of my idea on what, how to handle this since my smallest one is five rows wide by 50 feet. Well, this one will be four rows wide by 50 feet. This will be corn next year, and this will be just a mix of the veggies. This will be corn and beans and some squash. So, I can get 10 rows of corn in there, you know, and it does really good. It's got a really nice nitrogen thing in there, so it fixes itself a lot. There's a cottonwood tree here, so all the leaves kind of go here, and that kind of composes it. Uh, here, I think just like a little bit of mixed veggies. Um, maybe some melons and stuff like that as well. So I'm still working all that stuff out. The reason why I kind of cut it down to two small sections is because I don't have to buy as many amendments because what I was going to do is if I do this whole area, I mean, that's 100 feet by like 200, 2,000 square feet, you know. Is that 2,000? Am I correct? No, this one's actually four forty feet wide, I believe, like thirty nine feet. I mean, you'll be amending four thousand square feet at least. So with here, I mean, it's what's twenty times fifty. I can't do that right off the top of my head. <laughs> so that's like a thousand. That would be a thousand, right? Yeah. So it would be like a thousand square feet, and this would be a little bit less than a thousand. So. I mean, instead of amending a huge area and, you know, just two things at a time. And I'm experimenting with cover crops, so um, you'll see on my post, on my previous post, that this field over here is just strictly cover crops for the past couple of years. And the soil sample I was doing was about here, somewhere in the middle. And you'll see that the soil, you know, like the top, I don't know, it was like a top two inches that was, you know, getting darker, which is a really good sign that cover crops are working. This past year, I used this one for corn, but nothing really happened. I think it's just exhausted itself for the past couple of years. Um, and just trying to get amendments for everything at once is kind of ridiculous. And the monsoon was just really really late this year as well so then didn't really help and then the power line in garden is just a small section it was actually a big one but i just put the fruit tree garden 
into you know one longer area but there'll still be sections there'll be section one and two and this i just did oats and grains mainly spring oats this past um spring so i did a pretty good harvest on there so this will be the last ones to get hit up in five years i guess six years actually so and you know so they'll bounce every other one so at least they're closer um, and then we can use the same water source from here. They'll cover the two the following year, this, and I mean, even this, we'll probably just use over here. And drip tape as well. Drip tape is pretty expensive. I'm not really bringing in any huge profits at the moment with veggies. So I'm just kind of like, we'll just do what we can eat and any extras I sell off. So that's just how... I kind of do it on the garden, slowly getting the soil better. So it's kind of like a water source and then keeping everything close to one another. It's just kind of my thinking. I know everybody has their own process of, you know, how they lay out their garden, just the different layouts. And this is just kind of how things worked out for me um, since, you know, my family weren't really farmers or gardeners from the beginning that none of this was laid out, you know, this way. But when we first moved here, I know there were, my mom and dad, they planted this area once or twice with corn. So, you know, being Navajo, we grow a lot of corn and there's a lot of, you know, um, Navajo vegetables that, you know, that we grow corn mainly. So, I mean, one lot's going to always be dedicated to corn so like next year uh, this might be corn well the following year this might be corn and this might be mixed veggies or vice versa whichever way so there's always going to be one that's going to be dedicated to corn even here and then one with mixed veggies but then it's going to be a five-year rotation and all these will be cover crops and chickens you know and getting the soil ready and fertilizing. That's just kind of my thoughts, but it might change next year. Who knows? You know, like I said, the other one I did was a little bit different and pretty much just kind of the reasons why some of the positives and then uh, I probably should have wrote down some of the negatives too, but I can give you the negatives. Uh, this year I had Planted squash and melons here, and this had some squash, zucchinis and melons as well, and corn here. So, with that said, you know, it was just a huge kind of undertaking because I was hand watering these. Um, I kind of didn't have the funds to buy drip tape and just manually do it, but I did kind of just modify some of the old drip tape to just you know put bigger holes on it and it kind of worked but i kind of figured it out a little bit too late but you know you get tired of hand watering you know that's 100 feet and 100 feet and you got four rows and four rows so it gets kind of a little bit over daunting after a while so hopefully this will save some time for me next year labor wise and everything wise save on water and amendments as well so uh just do this go over this pretty quick so it'll be a five-year rotation um which is gonna be good that's plenty of time i think because the other four will be you know chickens um we'll be amending 2,000 square feet at a time per year instead of you know doing utilizing all these three as we did that would have been like six thousand maybe six maybe four yeah that would be a, that was like about six thousand and it's crazy i mean compost i don't do my own compost here so i just had to bring it in so that I would save money on compost and like blood mill bone mill so just organic fertilizer fertilization like that i don't do the chemical stuff but bone mill blood mill is you know it's pretty natural for me so i kind of tend to use those in my amendments um and allow cover crops to grow a little bit more to get more established 
and feed the chickens as well. Yep, and then chickens will have more vegetation that goes hand in hand. Uh, the portals are closer to each other, that the little dissections will be closer to one another. You know, if I want to hand water, I don't have to walk as much and all that, so. But I do have a little system, sprinkler system for this now, and then I have a plan to where I can do the sprinkler system, or the misting system, once the um, plants grow up, you know, then we can do drip tape. So those are just the thoughts right now. Uh, minimize spacing and water usage as well, because that uses a lot of water, especially this year. You know, we didn't get our monsoon until last month, which is crazy. Uh, and then I think this is just kind of like for myself, grow what we need, not what we want. So that with the minimal space, that's definitely going to come in handy because I, you know, I would I always want to grow a whole lot of things, grow everything, plant everything. <laughs> so that's kind of like what kind of overwhelmed me this year. So you just have to, it's just learning from experience. I mean, if you can do it, you know, good for you. But I couldn't because I had an off-farm job. Taking care of my mom, taking care of the animals, and then, you know, you have like an hour after work to, you know, check your garden and just the weekends as well. So it's just kind of what I need. So it's just like needs over wants, um, mineral planting. So this is one that I really have to do for myself, minimal planting, which in terms with me is just like instead of doing a whole row of spinach you know maybe i'll do a little you know one row width which would be 30 by about two feet and that's enough for about two feet 24 um about four four by 12 or four by three be 12 so at least 12 spinach plants and that's enough for us to eat you know so just thoughts like that break them up into sections on the 50 foot row because you know, we only got four rows to work with so um this is just one thing i know just a side comment it's hard to do but do it so that's going to be one thing i have to definitely you know discipline myself with so that's my list for now. I know that was a little, a lot of ranting, but, um, you know, I just kind of, it's a lot of my thoughts coming out, you know, experimenting with my area here when I expanded. And also, I really had no intentions of what I was going to do in the future. I mean, this was four years ago, but now I do. I know what I want to do and I know where I want to go, you know, in five years time and even 10 years from now. I started with, I think last year I really started thinking about that. I started with the egg layers, which I have this year. Uh, they're doing a great job. They're awesome. Um, if you're thinking about getting into that, it's fun. It's awesome. You know, chickens can prep a garden for you i learned that from justin rhodes from his channel so also using the cover crop system you know i just i wanted to naturally improve the soil here i am on a really really sandy soil which is crazy so um that's why i get my soil tested um almost yearly um, I didn't get my organic matter this year, so that's like an additional 35 bucks. So I just do the regular one. Maybe next year I'll get it done again, see the improvement. So that's just kind of what I'm thinking. I sorry, I always lose track of what I'm talking about. I get sidetracked so easily. I thinking about something, I say something, and then <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one, but yeah, so where was I at? Um, experience with everything <laughs> um it's just been crazy you know it's the past five years that i've been doing this now the first year really didn't really count for me since you know 
I was really just learning. I call that year zero, but this is year five now. So, well, six years, I guess. It'll be coming up this following spring. It'll be six years. Um, just a lot of things. And at the time, the first couple of years, I didn't really see where this would go for me. It was just more of a hobby that I would, you know, that I wanted to do because of our location. We're about an hour's drive from, you know, supermarkets at the time. So that's, you know, the reason why I wanted to plant, you know, spinach, a lot of spinach, kale, arugula, you know, the little salad mixes. So that was, you know, my taking on it and it provided fresh produce for me and my mom you know, just here, instead of having to drive an hour that way, an hour that way, an hour that way, you know, an hour in all directions just to get to a supermarket. And, you know, before I moved back here, my mom was living on canned foods and all this processed food. It's like, no, no, man, we can't do that, you know. So I started looking into gardening and I found Jean Martin Fortier, the market gardener. I'm pretty sure most of you know him. If not, check him out. He's very knowledgeable. But his is more of a commercial production now with his new um, eight acre garden. I believe it was eight acres. Uh, but he's doing a lot of really good things. See that? Sidetracked. <laughs> but yeah, you know, thanks to him. Um, really knowledgeable. And then, you know, I got into the healthy side of stuff a few years prior to moving back here. So I just needed fresh produce that, you know, that I can have and eat, you know. So that's what got me into gardening. Um, also with the experimentation wise, what was I at? Oh, long-term future. At the time I didn't see myself getting this far, but as I started growing, I, you know, I got my brother-in-law to prep the double wide section, double wide plot and the nine and line plot for me three years ago. And ever since then, I, I've just been kind of like enjoying it more and more. And this is something that I wanted to do. And at the time I also got into, you know, um, the, the grass fed beef part of you know the garden so instead of just being strictly veggies and all this is I kind of diversify myself which I think is the best thing to do and all that but we also sell sheep and goat meat um and just got into grass-fed beef uh, veggies and now fresh eggs so it's just a slow thing I'm not jumping into everything all at once so with the chickens it's awesome having them around they're great fresh eggs you know so with that you know i started thinking last year if the chicken thing goes well then we'll go into you know meat chickens which is a thing i have planned now for next spring so i'm going to bring in about a i'm thinking a dozen uh, meat chickens and raise them up process them everything goes well you know, it's summertime, get a dozen more chicks to raise them, and same thing in the fall. So at least we got a little, you know, by that time, things should have figured out the things, you know, that went wrong, the things that went right. I think three times should be okay, right? But then the following year, do the same thing, you know, not nothing too crazy yet. Um, so that's just things. And then the following year or a couple of years after that, you know, I want to do pork you know, they'll be pigs so bring it in uh pigs as well raise my own pork um home home raised bacon you know all grass fed and whatnot so that would be awesome so those are just the future goals of mine um and if you're new to following me which i love it you know keep i'm going to keep continuing to improve my homestead and my biggest goal if you know if you're new to following me is to have at least 90 to 95 percent of what I eat you know that I raise on my own so that's like long term 10 years from now 
I mean, by that time, it, everything should have been stabilized, easy going. Well, not easy going, but you know what I mean. Just kind of a smoother flow, flowing. That should be easier, like a smooth flow of things. You know, you get to do things, you know, on a daily, and then you figure out the process. So that's kind of that's more of what I'm talking about. As easy going, not like you know, just. <laughs> The marvelous dream of you know homesteading, not doing nothing, chilling, lounging. But you, we all know that that's not what it is. So every day is a crazy day. Um, right now it's winter. I still need to get more firewood since we have a wood burning stove. Um, and that's always um, a huge task in the fall. So. But anyway, I know I'm ranting, but those are my long-term goals right now to why I'm doing what I'm doing. And it's always good to write stuff down on paper. I've always been a writer, so I just use pen, pencil, paper, whatever I can get my hands on. But, you know, it's always great to share your thoughts and your processes with other farmers, gardeners, homesteaders. You know, we're all in this together to improve our health to live a better life and not rely on big ag and everything else so uh, you can share your comments with me follow my blog on instagram um actually my blog is on laughinggoatgardens.com follow me on instagram facebook I'm trying to get the twitter thing but that's kind of always push to the back uh linkedin is a new one that i started doing uh tiktok a new one that i'm trying to you know get a little some fun videos up there for that so anyway that's it for now um signing off from laughing goat gardens have an awesome day and enjoy your weekend it's actually Friday right now, so hopefully this will post, I don't know when. Peace.